Okay, an unboxing video here. I think I have something that could be pretty interesting and potentially very useful when it comes to card making. It's nothing, you know, terribly new, but maybe the format could be new in terms of usage, okay? And what we have here is a pack of 11 by 17 wood grained placemats. Now, there's been wood grain cardstock for, you know, I don't know, 25, 30 years or something like that. It's been a long time, okay? And uh, I have um, some examples on the, uh, the website in the gallery from uh, Shannon that sent me, uh, or gave me a couple um, pieces, um, I don't know, over 20 years ago, and they were really cool. And the I'll put a link to it in the uh, description uh, section of this website, but she had um, stamped her imagery and embossed them in black and then colored in with um, markers. I, I don't know, I, th I think they would be something like a water-based marker, but they looked really fantastic and uh, stylish, elegant. Um, but I, I don't know, I just haven't gotten around to uh, testing it out. I've always had kind of, you know, the wood grain styles of paper kind of in the back of my mind as something to try out, but, um, you know, using the, uh, the vintage papers um, got me to thinking, you know, there's probably some sort of, there's probably not vintage paper in 11 by 17, but I was starting to think, well, what about like a, a wood grain or something like that? Placemat. Okay, so these are dining placemats, just disposable placemats that you put down, you know, for people to eat off of. But, so they're really thin. Uh, they're probably thinner than copy paper a little bit, but who cares, you know, because, you know, if we're using this, we're probably mounting it on something anyway. Okay, so that being said, I want to stamp on here and test it out. But I started thinking, you know, this paper right here would really be really fantastic for, um, you know, some sort of border on these types of uh, scenes. You know, I don't know about this one here, but um, uh, I think it would look really great and potential. You know, if you're stamping like a forest, you know, in terms of thematically, I think this could look really great as a little border around our pieces. So. Um, colored pieces, um, all kinds of different looks. Oh, this one's just, you know, using all kinds of different colors here. I don't know about that, but um, I don't know. I think this is a, a really great look. Look at this with the, uh, the gold like this. I think that looks pretty good like that. But let's, let's try out a, a few scenes on this. I'm going to cut this down into um, some... Standard card sizes, so you can get, you know, 16 scenes out of one sheet of this. And this is like a incredibly inexpensive pack here because they're disposable, very thin placemats. So, I don't know. And it looks, I don't know, to me, this looks really quite realistic here. So, whatever scanning and... Uh, you know, printing job they did on here. It's it's really amazing. It looks like, you know, like a uh, like a laminate or something like that, or what do you call it, a veneer. So let's give it a test and see what these uh, can look like. All right, so the first thing that we're going to test for is ink compatibility, and I'm going to go with a, a pretty solid image here um, because that will kind of best test the... Um, I don't know, the porousness of the paper, uh, the, le the less porous, the, the, you know, the less ink is going to absorb into the surface. So let's give it a try, and we'll first start off with the Brilliance Ink. I have a feeling that the Brilliance Ink will do very well, but we'll see. It's proven to be one of the more kind of reliable um, inks on kind of unconventional stamping surfaces. All right, a great impression. So far, so good. My, I mean, you know, what I'm hoping for is that all of them work on this uh, type of surface here. Okay, let's get that cleaned 
off really well. And let's go with uh, let's go with the dye next, okay? Because this is also a water-based one. I don't know about the dye. You know, um, if anything is not going to work, I'm just taking a guess that it's going to be the dye uh, because it's the thinnest of these types of things. It's water-based. You know, it's thinner than you know pigment ink. If it works great, we're really rolling here, and I would guess that the other two should work just fine. Okay, so that is not too bad, but it's a lot um, lighter than, let's say, a full impression of black. So I'd say that's about maybe like an 80% um, gray, a little bit less so down here. Now, that being said, I mean, Maybe if I held that down longer, you can probably get a better impression. Let's test for um, absorbency. That's still a little bit moist on there, so I would say that it did absorb into this paper pretty good. Okay, so it's not like um, like this one right here that's a little bit more sealed. Okay, so less... Uh, I don't know, whatever, printer's ink or something like that, or less um, coating on this one. And I think it's just because these are placements. You know, these are placements, so they're not coating this, like something like this, perhaps, which isn't necessarily seen as something, you know, throwaway. You're printing things on here, you know what I mean? You're probably keeping it. This, they see it as a one-time use, and you're tossing it out for sure. You know, you're not going to save a, you know, a paper placement, you know, again, after food's fallen on it. Okay, so this is a little bit of a dry clair. Okay, a medium dry. It's not completely dry. Eh, I, I don't know. I can get a pretty good inking of that, it looks like. So let's give this a shot. Now remember, this, this, like I said, this might be a little bit drier. Your clair might be wetter, you know, might be fine. If this doesn't come out, you know, as dark as, you know, it pot potentially could. Let's let's give it a try here. So Claire, it's not just the brand Claire. Okay, so Claire would be kind of one of the better versions of your oil-based pigment ink. So water-based pigment ink, water-based dye, oil-based pigment. Okay, so the oil-based pigments, oil things dry slower than water, right? So after you get it stamped on there. All right, so that looks pretty light right there. And again, my, my pad might be a little bit dry. I keep saying that over and over in these videos. I really need to uh, look around and see if I did get a, a re-inker for that. I don't remember if I did, but I, I don't know. I need to get re-inkers for a bunch of things. All right, so it, the impression is pretty crisp. So it's a lot darker down here than up there. Um, just, I don't know, I might not have inked it up enough. But that's not bad, okay? I assume that if you re-ink your pad and stamp it out, it's going to be somewhere in between that one and this one, okay? It, maybe, it, I don't know, maybe even darker, I don't know. Okay, let's go with the stays on. Very fast drying solvent ink, right? Very surface oriented. I'm going to try a couple different impressions of the stays on. I'm going to try to hold it down on the paper so that it really, really dries in between the time that I'm, you know, contacting the paper and lifting it, okay? It stays on, stays on is one of those funky things where um, impression time can play a factor in the ink transfer, um, I don't know, whatever, uh, amount. All right, that looks really, really dark. So that's looking pretty good. Now let's go with a faster impression of this, okay? I'm not talking about two seconds or anything like that, but, you know, let's just go for a standard print. All right, the stays on, you know. That's looking pretty good right there. Okay, so if we do a stays on um, impression, remember, if I want to color with alcohol inks on it, maybe not a good idea because it could put the stays on solvent, you know, alcohol and solvent put together, could put it back into solution. If you want to color something like the Brilliance, Brilliance might smear because it's very surface oriented, 
and the dye based, you know, shouldn't um, lift with, you know, alcohol, alcohol and water, all right? The Claire, probably so, because it's an oil based. I'm talking about, you know, coloring something. Saying, I'm not coloring these trees, but like an open area of a different design. So that being said, let's try a couple other tests here now, okay? So what I want to do is I want to test for um, blending on this type of paper, okay? So these are the impressions right here. So let's test for... Um, this paper is just so amazingly cheap, you can... You know, I don't, you shouldn't really feel kind of bad about testing a lot of things on here and just chucking it, right? Okay, so this is your alcohol ink, okay? Seems like it applies just fine. And it's really absorbent, okay? Which you would probably expect from something like this. Okay. It's very absorbent, and the transparent alcohol links are do you know show through pretty well. All right. While it's wet, I can see it's kind of buckling a little bit. Not, I mean, not too bad. I mean, you kind of expect that. This is like super, super thin. Like I said, it's thinner than copy paper. But it looks good to me. Okay, so let's test for some ink uh, blending on this. Okay, so let's go with the, a dye-based ink. And let's bring some of this into it. I'm seeing if I can kind of add a little bit of blended tone potentially into this type of paper. I'm going to blend this in with the grain. So that's one of those papers where, um, you know, there's a direction to it. So I think kind of blending with the grain is a, you know, a pretty good idea. I mean, sometimes, you know, if you're, you know, you just want to get an edge or something like that, you can do that too. But I tend to think it looks a little bit more graceful if we do it with the grain like this. Okay, let's see how fast this um, absorbs into it. That is a really soft blend. I've been using this sponge here the past, I don't know, a couple days and it looks pretty good. Let's see if we can get kind of a harsh, you know, something like that. And now let's see what happens if you kind of blend it out. So we're, what we're doing is we're testing for um, porousness, you know, oops. You can see how thin this is. So, okay, so it's, it's you know, decent porousness. Okay, because I, you know, I got that impression, that harsh kind of edge right there of the sponge, but it's not so porous that, like if I did it on a piece of like absorbent paper like this, okay, you know, you try to blend it out. Actually, it's blending out okay. <laughs> or I don't know, not great, but I'm just seeing if I can kind of blend in. Um, you know, kind of harsher um, applications of ink. Now, I would never do that with something like this. I was purposely, like, you know, pushing it down like that to get the edge of this sponge showing. But this feels this feels perfectly um, suitable for very graceful blends like that. You know, on here. I mean, I'm going. I'm also going with the darkest of colors possible on here. So that looks pretty good to me. All right, so let's test this out with, okay, I'm, that being said, I'm not gonna do it with the, you know, the stays on stays on, I'll never blend like that on here. It'll be, you know, if I ink up like this and I go like this, it's dry before I even touch the paper. The VersaFine Clear would be just fine. It's an oil based on here, but I'm usually not using, um, you know, that type of ink or maybe Brilliance would be fine too. But if I'm going for these softer blends like this and if I can use a thinner ink, I'm probably going to go with the dye-based ink because it's going to be more absorbent and dry faster just for convenience. But um, uh, I don't know. I, I don't see any problem with that one. So um, that's probably what I would do here. Okay, so uh, one other comment is that um, if we want to go with some sort of like vignette around our perimeter like that, and if you're just going to stamp on top of it, you know, you can put this 
lay this kind of perimeter down and then stamp your image over the top of it and then you know uh, color in or something like that or you could stamp your image first and do that so you know in terms of sequencing I don't think it's going to matter too much okay uh, it could depend on what ink you're using you know if I just stamp this out and I just start toning over the top of it without letting it dry up you know a little bit it could smear. The stays on I don't think would smear because again it dries so fast and if I'm blending over with water based over the solvent it should move it around. All right so I, I, just those little things like that keep those in mind. It, it's not so I don't think this paper is going to be so and you know it's not like a foil or different brands of foil where you know it can really change depending on the media yet you're using this seems reasonably compatible with a lot of different things. It's just, you know, some are going to be a little bit darker than others in terms of the impression quality. So keep that in mind. Okay, let's, so let's test, uh, you know, this out with a, a few different scenes. Let me grab some stamps. Okay, so one of the things about this wood grain paper, the way you cut it out, you're going to have the grain running in a certain direction. So keep that in mind. This one's more vertical, or if you do it this way, you know, in a portrait, it's going to be uh, horizontal. So, just, you know, keep like if I'm doing like a cabin, you know, and I want like water down here and sky up here, maybe I'm going to do it this way, you know. This way kind of reinforces more of a vertical type of um, structuring. Um, you know, hey, you can play around with that. I guess you can kind of contrast things, you know, if you have things growing up this way, maybe it it contrasts more this way. I don't know. But keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm using my stays on here because it showed that it, you know, works pretty good and gives me a really dark impression. So I'm going to test that out here. Let's go with the, that was the sedge filler. Let's try the um, tree trunk trio here. Nice and dark. Stays on. Stays on's looking good. Doesn't have to be stays on. You know, when I say stays on, you know, I'm just, I don't know, mention the brand that has, you know, a lot of high name recognition, you know, but some sort of solvent ink, like a permanent ink, you know. You might have your own brand that you like. It might have a little bit of different characteristics, but it's probably going to be a solvent ink, I would guess, if it's a if it's a permanent ink, just like a like a permanent mark or like a sharpie or something of that sort. Okay, a lot of surface area on the tree trunk here. So I'm standing up and you know, getting some good um, impression pressure behind me on that one. All right, and let's do kind of a smaller element in here as well with the leaf, uh, leafless pine, I don't know. There's a leafless pine, small and medium and large. This one's kind of a leafless pine, I don't know, dinky. Okay. Oh, let's go for a little bit of foreground in here. Okay, I'm I made that first impression a little bit too fast. I need to hold a little bit longer, probably, to give myself a really good impression. I'm not talking, you know, I'm talking about like an extra, I don't know, whatever, second or something like that. Two seconds, I don't know. Okay. Oh, a little 
tiny rocks here. Just for a little bit of extra texturing. Right at the base of these trees. All right, I have this quote here between every two pines is a doorway to a new world. All right, I stamp with white before on this one, so I bet I'm hoping that I get a good impression with this. Uh, when I stamp my um, word stamps, forgive me for putting my big head in the view of the camera, but I need to see this top portion up here to give myself a reasonably decent chance at a straight impression. Sometimes I'm a little bit skewed. I've long since kind of, I don't know, not worried about that too much though. All right, yeah, it's a little bit, the doorway part stands out a little bit more. Maybe a little bit of a, kind of a bolder image would be good, uh, or bolder text, but not too bad. All right, and let's go for our um, elk large here. Okay. All right, so if you're in a hurry or you just don't want to take, you know, too much time to to do a lot of, you know, coloring and things like that, to me, this is looking pretty darn good. Uh, I mean, thematically, visually, texturally, I think that's looking really awesome. Okay, so, I mean, this can be done... I think it looks absolutely finished if we wanted to, but I'm going to, you know, we're practicing this, so I'm going to add a little bit of tone to this. I'm going to anchor my trees a little bit with some uh, that dye-based ink that I just tested out here. Adding a little bit of shade here in the... Uh... Oops! I went with a brilliant ink right here. No wonder it was so thick. I'm sitting there thinking, man, that is really dark. But, I don't know. Let's test that out. It looks pretty good. Yeah, let's go with a little bit of a lighter, thinner ink, okay, with the uh, the dye-based ink, okay? Yeah, it's a little bit lighter. When you go in with a kind of a lighter tone, it's, uh, there's more control. Now, you can go with a brown or something like that if you want to, and or multiple colors, or you can use... Oh, so I'm going to try some colored pencils on here, too. I really love colored pencils these days. Something like that. A little bit more shade, you know, it kind of brings in the viewer's attention into the center a little bit more. Let's go for that vignette that we were talking about. So just kind of darkening the, the perimeter a little bit. Or, you know, or a lot, whatever you want to do. Like this. And see, I'm going with the grain like this a little bit. So making this a little bit darker around the edges and maybe up top. And then down below, kind of the uh, trees are kind of casting a little bit of a shadow down there. We'll make it darker on the edge here, like about like so. And I don't know, I think that makes for a pretty dramatic piece. Maybe I blended in a little bit too much. I wonder if I can remove. I think I just removed a little bit of ink here. You know, going with the clean side like this. That is removing not not in a huge way, but a little bit of uh, a little bit of ink on there. Hmm. Looks pretty good. Let's test a little bit of color on here, just out of curiosity. I mean, I think it looks good as is, but this is like a test um, scene. So let's try a little bit of green down here. Hmm. Looks good. 
it, it, I'm talking about looks good as far as you know transferring you know that tone down you see a little bit of tinge of green that's applying to this with zero issues so see this here's green like this it marks on this paper just fine this paper has a lot of tooth to it so colored pencils are going to be a really fantastic option like that all right like i said i don't want to go you know down a rabbit hole and do it you know start applying like 20 different text techniques on this but this colored pencil looks really good so let's test out a little bit of this brown on this tree right here or trees I'm kind of leaving the insides of the trees a little bit lighter so that looks like the lighting is coming from the interior all right so the trees to the right are getting right side toned a little bit more so this one tree to the left is getting left side, you know, toned, shaded, like that. God, that looks pretty good. I don't know. Just having that, like I said, that, and that, that you can't see the, the tree textures in these trees very much, but, you know, all of that warm color tone in that, uh, you know, just to start with looks pretty darn uh, nice as a, as a head start for us. Okay, and let's add some shadows down here into our thing. We'll add a little bit of shadow down underneath the elk here. Like that. See that right there? That makes for a pretty quick card. Let's take a look and see what this, you know, I don't know. You can add it to this, like, gold, you know. I, oh, man, that looks really good, I think, with this gold around it like that. Huh. All right. First test. I don't know. I think it looks pretty good. All right. Let's test out another uh, scene. Okay. I'm going to do a kind of a version of uh, the scene that was uh, given to me on wood grain paper a long time ago. It'll be a version of it. Okay. So I'm going vertical here. That maybe looks like a little bit more like sky to me, and maybe I want the lighter portion to be kind of down here. So I'm going to do it in this configuration. That'll be like a you know, whatever kind of sky. Is that a cirrus sky? or It's not a mackerel sky. All right. Plenty of pressure on the interior, middle portion sides, etc. Top, bottom of your large stamps with a lot of surface um, surface uh, uh, a lot of surface on it, you know. As opposed to, like a design could be really large, but it could be, be like linear. This is like tonal, so there's a lot of surface area on the stamp, so like, this is a big stamp, too, but you don't have to press as hard because there's not as much contact, you know, as something like you know, like this, you know, you have all this area in here, okay? Just, uh, you know, stamping whatever, 101. Okay, so let's build this out a little bit on the sides. You know, I'm going with my sedge filler like that. Uh, let's see, we need some trees out to the side here, so let me go grab a stamp for that. Okay, I just grabbed tree cluster small. It's pretty cool for a sky texturing up there, isn't it? All right, I'm masking off my um, kind of horizon line right there and just going for a little impression right there. Do it over here too. And just using kind of the top portions of my tree cluster stamp. All right, so you get those filled in right here. You can go for some extra, let's go for some extra trees right here in the foreground. Let's not bring in too many designs into this uh, first, uh, you know, test with a new surface. We want to keep things really nice and simple here. That being said, there are some things coming to mind that I can't wait to try. 
on this paper. Uh, in terms of different media and coloring. All right, let's go down here a little bit. All right, so let's see here. Oh, that would be perfect for some um, quote stamp up there. Um, or you can put some mountains in the background there. I want to keep that sky texture though. Let's let's really um, have the um, you know the texturing of this nice and prominent in this first uh, test. All right, let's let's keep things really simple here. Let's go with some um, colored pencil in here. Here's my old mill. This is the old mill. If I didn't say that, a little bit of an earthy brown tone in here. I'm going to keep the. Yeah, maybe I'll bring a little bit of color up on that, but not too much. Okay, so see that. So it looks a little bit more. I don't know, three-dimensional when you darken in the sides a little bit, leave the top a little bit lighter. Here's um, a little bit more shading underneath the eave, like that. Okay. Um, a little bit of shading from the area. See this area down around here and the base of the rocks? They're a little bit darker, right? So you just kind of reiterate that a little bit with like a 5% gray or something like that. You just start off really light, okay? Some people say that they have a really heavy hand, okay? But just imagine that you're, I don't know, you're applying like some sort of something, lotion onto like a, a baby's face, you know what I mean? You're gonna be able to handle that, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, say, oh my gosh, I was so heavy handed. You know what I mean? Just be delicate. You know, think of it at, like, you know, like a like an infant or something like that. And you're just applying something very lightly to it. And, uh, you know, think about it in terms of the spirit of it. And you'll do just fine. Let's try that green again. Okay. Or a different green in here. And don't color everything, okay? Leave some areas a little bit lighter, okay? So I'm kind of concentrating this in the shadow areas, you know, areas that are a little bit darker at the base of some trees, underneath some rocks like this, okay? When you don't color everything and you leave some areas um, lighter, you're coloring and lighting at the same time because you're just retaining some areas that are just lighter to begin with. You're not adding light back into something you're defining it through the use of a little bit of shade. So it doesn't have to be like this, right? You're just going like this. So just keep a really light touch. If you, you know, do feel that you have a heavy hand, then don't hold like this, which can, afford, you know, apply a lot of pressure. You hold it like this, okay? And then use the side of your piece and don't have too much pressure around it. Have your hand back here. You know what I mean? I mean, you can still apply a decent amount of pressure, don't get me wrong, but, you know, sometimes when you change up like that, this is the way that they teach you to hold um, pencils and pens when you're in um, drawing classes in college. Now, whether or not people are doing that or not, I don't know, you know, it's... I did it sometime, you know, if the teacher's walking around. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I did try to, you know, to do what they were, you know, teaching. I mean, they were doing it for a point. Okay, here's a little bit of water in here. And see, I'm not doing it everywhere. You know, because, you know, we want to keep the spirit of the paper. You know, we're not just trying to eradicate, you know, kind of the, the characteristic of the, uh, you know, the existing uh, surface because it is such a prominent, you know, integral element of this scene, so. All right, let's try some, uh, a little bit of highlighting on here. Let's go with a... Uh, Kind of, again, more of a beige, you know, pen. And that's what I've been using on my vintage papers. So let's see what this looks like here. Yeah. Um, put a little bit of highlighting on the rooftop here. Eh, maybe that is a little bit too light. I don't know. It is really light. Let me see something. That is really, really light.
Maybe that's the right amount of brightness right there. I just kind of wipe some off here. So this is really kind of showing up really kind of prominently. So I'm going to use it more sparingly. Um, a little bit of highlighting, specular light in my water. Okay. So this paper is a little bit darker than kind of, I don't know, I don't know. What seems to be, I guess, I, I guess this paper, this vintage paper, is lighter than this one, okay? This grain on here, so. That being said, I'm curious. Let's, let me test something here. Here's a couple colored pencils that are lighter. I don't know if these are gonna show up or not, you know, if they would make something lighter underneath. I don't have a really great white pen. I don't have my Prisma, but let's try this one right here. This is a, I don't know what, uh, this isn't really a colored pencil. It's more of like a charcoal pencil. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Do you, I'm just making my, you know, tops of my uh, rocks a little bit lighter. Again, just as a test. I like it just with the colored pencils, but I want to test some different media here just to give you guys a little bit of a, you know, kind of a heads up, as you know, a, an, an initial heads up, you know, in terms of uh, compatibility here so that you can just go right into your, you know, applications or, you know, if you saw something that you hated. But I think that looks pretty cool on there. So this is a Stabilo Carb Othello 1400-100. Uh, I don't know what that is. All right, let me get a quote stamp for this one. All right, in the woods we return to reason and faith. A lot of people like that quote, or this uh, word stamp. I used it with the, uh, I think the antique vintage paper pieces. Uh, let's see, is that reasonably straight? I can't even see through this anymore. It's a little bit uh, fogged up. I really need, need to clean off my blocks. I haven't taken the uh, the time, the five minutes it would take. <laughs> Just because I've been so busy trying some other things, you know. Uh, the vintage papers have been like a lot of fun to play around with. So... Um, I don't know. I tend to not clean while I'm kind of on a roll, you know, testing things out. But, um, all right, so we have a couple different cards here. I mean, these are really fast um, types of uh, applications. This one right here, I used a little bit more, maybe too much tone. I, I probably want tone around that I would probably just add in the, the tone on the trees itself. Like, this one doesn't have any kind of, you know, um, uh, vignette around it, and I think it looks pretty good. So, a little bit of different types of things going on in here, you know, with a little bit of that white in there, on there. You know, I don't know if you like it or not. I guess that white pen could be used for, you know, a little bit of fog or something like that, too. You know, I like to do that type of thing. Um, but yeah. Let me do something on this one right here. Let's just, you know, like I, what I was saying, I was thinking maybe I shouldn't have put in that, um, little bit of uh, additional uh, vignetting on there. So what do we do in stamping? Or at least what we do in scenic stamping. Maybe in all forms of stamping, but scenic stamping, it just seems to kind of, oh, I don't know if the word is making sense, but uh, it just seems to be a natural thing to just cover it up with a branch. You know, if there's something that's a little bit heavy-handed or something like that somewhere. Let's go like this right here. With the, this is just my leaves stamp. Let's go for a pretty dark impression here, okay? So that it looks like it's really kind of close to us. All right. See that right there? Cover it up. Same thing, we'll do it on the other side. See, this looks a little bit too heavy in the background with that, uh, with that tone. With a, kind of the shading. 
maybe maybe you know a better color to add a little bit of a vignette to it would have been brown you know instead of black you know so it kind of it would harmonize with the brown tones of the wood grain paper right or if you have like a like a distress ink walnut stain those stained ones right um, would be perfect because they represent you know stuff that you'd use on you know wood right so I don't know, it kind of makes sense. Maybe it'd be the like the ultimate application or the ultimate perfect application of those types of, uh, you know, stamp color pads or, you know. All right, hey, that I think that looks pretty good there. So we've obscured some of that um, kind of heavier handed uh, black vignetting on there, which usually works, but on this paper. Mm, I mean, it still could work if I do like a whole, you know, I bought that. 11 by 17 to do maybe a large large format monster map on there or something of that sort um you know so i'd add in some other tones in there like that but um there we have it what do you think you know i think this paper is going to be pretty good so <laughs> don't think about just card stocks I, I saw this other paper that was burlap okay so it looks like burlap it look you know it really looks like real burlap you know it was like perfect for um place mats you know for dinner settings and uh you know disposable that might kind of entail cheapness okay when it comes to um our type of usage okay we want beautiful papers and everything like that but sometimes having a cheaper paper, you know, it might result in having, you know, less of a, a coating on it or resistance to certain things. So, you know, I mean, this kind of opens it up. Don't go off my clair. My clair is a little bit dry. Um, but it really opens it up to a lot of our different types of inks that we have. You know, if you're working on kind of a cheaper uncoated, you know, in this case, disposable paper. So, I think these look really great visually, okay? And like I said, again, I would just, you know, I'm going to mount these anyway. So the mount themselves are going to be the things that are providing the stiffness for the paper. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Not really an issue with me in terms of, uh, you know, just the paper quality in itself. Okay, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like this uh, channel, hope you hit the like button and subscribe and hit the notifications button and join us in on a live stream. Thanks as always for tuning in.